Welcome. I'm here with David Guerreri, Vector Control Supervisor of Maricopa County Environmental Services. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. When the weather's great in Arizona, which is practically year-round, mm -hmm. um, the critters come out and play. Uh, what does that mean for you? Oh, well, we see uh, an increase of roof rat activity, bees, feral bees, and um, flies, so yes. So pretty much any time of the year, you have a different kind of infestation that you're kind of targeting. Yes, all year round, we can see some kind of activity. Yeah. What, um, for in the summer, for example, uh, what's the type of activity do you see? Well, we see, um, we do see roof rat activity during the summer, and then during, usually during the fall and springtime is, is, is when they are busy making new nests and, and mating and stuff like that. During the spring and fall, we also see more uh, bee activity. So uh, we do see some of that during the summer, but really during the winter when they're milder weather, they really get active. Now, you, you mentioned roof rats. Um, mm -hmm. I, I read a story um, recently in the Arizona Republic talking about roof rats in the West Valley. And I never associated that to be in the West Valley versus in Arcadia or uh, kind of the greener spots mm -hmm. uh, where the fruit used to grow prolifically uh, downtown. Why is that? We have a very mobile community. People move and they transfer from one area of town to the other town. So they, they catch hitchhikers. Okay. We, have, uh, we have landscapers that, you know, they, you, your landscapers might move around a little bit. And, you know, they, since, since roof rats like to be up high, like in the, in the trees and stuff like that, they take those cuts down and then they take them to another neighborhood and then the roof rats jump off. What do you do? If you, if you think you have roof rats, what, uh, what action can you take as a homeowner? Well, it's important to make sure that you've taken care of your, your property. Make sure you've removed all the refuge, any place where they can nest. You want to make sure you've removed their, their food source. So any kind of fruit that's laying around up on the trees, as soon as it gets ready, and dog food as well. Um, roof rats are very adaptable. They'll eat dog food, they'll eat cat food. They're, they're not picky. Do we need to be more concerned about just roof rats, or are there other types of rats as well that we need well, to be concerned about? A lot of times about? we do get confused with the roof rats and, and pack rats. Pack rats are native. You know, they live out in the desert, of course, but if you, uh, if you have enough, if there's enough food for them out here, then they will go in, into your backyard and, and get those feeders, of bird feeders, they'll get the dog food, and then they take it back to their nests. If you have a neighbor that has old fruit on a tree, and mm -hmm. um, let's say some of that fruit is brown because they, they haven't cleaned up yet, even from the winter freeze, mm -hmm. what can you do? I recommend just you know talking to your neighbor. Maybe they you know they need they maybe they they need help. It'd be a good time to get to know your neighbors a little bit. Um, there are programs that will take the fruit and give it to uh, some of the food banks or give it down to the sheriff's department or something for the inmates. You can use that as well. Now, if someone does have, thinks they have a roof rat population, mm -hmm. um, what would you do then? What, what are kind of the steps that you would take for, for that person that calls you asking for help? We um, will go out and we will start an initial investigation. If we can't see evidence of uh, roof rat activity, then there's a lot of things that we, we honestly we can't do. Um, we, can, we can view the conditions of the property and the neighborhood and make suggestions of how to, how to clean that property up and how to get them to you know, maybe move on. Um, if we actually see uh, an infestation where there's roof rats, you know, we can see nesting and, and stuff like that. And then we can, we can step that up a little bit. What are the uh, types of things that you can do to eradicate? I mean, uh, right here you have a, a poison pill, it looks like. Is, is that for roof rats there? <laughs> this is, when uh, roof rats first came into the valley, we set out thousands, tens of thousands of these bait stations. And you put the bait in here, and the raft, the raft goes in the hole, get the bait station, and they take it back to their home. We went, and when we went to, to check on these, they were all full. What we found was that there was so much food for the roof rats to eat that they wouldn't go after this. So that's when our program kind of shifts from a, 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 that kind of a program to laying down bait and stuff to more of a community outreach, a community education. Okay. And so that's what we're kind of focusing on now is just that education. Because it's a, because we live in an environment where it's mild year round, um, it's a constant visual. We can't just you know, clean up one year and then forget all the next years. And we have to continually keep moving right. on that. 
and it, it's important for residents too to it's to keep up with their properties uh, day mm -hmm. in day out as much as possible. You know, it's not just for their own safety, but it's also for the neighborhood as well. Yep. Yeah. I mean, and it would be nice if we had a magic pill or something to take mm -hmm. care of everything, but unfortunately, it's a constant vigil. Now, in the news, um, which can happen year-round, you hear about these bee attacks mm -hmm. and beehives, and, and mm -hmm. are there certain, what can you do about those? The, the important thing is to be vigil, to be aware of your surroundings. When you're out hiking or when you're out in your property mowing your lawn or something like that, you want to make sure that you're not running into a nest. We suggest that every beehive that we come across is going to be Africanized to some degree. It becomes kind of a hybrid because uh, we just don't want to take the chance. Oh, I see. So you're always assuming that it's going to yes. be worst case scenario. Yes. So if at my home, for example, I have a hummingbird feeder and mm -hmm. a few times a year, the bees will kind of swarm on it. Yep. Um, now, is that something I should be concerned about or is it just hungry bees? Yeah, those are working bees, those are foraging bees. They're doing a job just like you, or, you, know, just like you do a job when you come in in the morning. So they really, they really don't care about us. They're out, they're, they're out foraging. Um, what you, you don't want to necessarily be worried about one bee, you want to be worried about the hive. The different characteristics of a European hive where they would attack with maybe you know, a couple hundred, a thousand bees. Uh, an African hive, hive, a hybrid hive, will attack with thousands, tens of thousands. Wow. And that's where you start getting into the damage because people, people can only take so many stings and then they start having issues. Now, when you are, are walking around your house, what are some of the telltale signs that maybe you have a hive that you should get checked out? You want to look for activity, a lot of bee activity coming and going. Um, if you get close, you can start hearing maybe a, a faint buzz, just things like that. They are going to nest anywhere where they feel safe. So if you haven't been in your shed for a couple of weeks or something, you may want to you know, take a look around your shed or take a look around your, your wood pile or whatever you're doing before you just go jumping into, into work. Now, you may land on a hive. At, at a lot of the, the stores and shops around, you can buy uh, bee killer and different type of insect insecticide type mm -hmm. stuff. Is that a smart thing to do? I would leave it up to the professionals. Because again, because if you don't have a bee suit, if you're not prepared for the onslaught of the bees that are going to come out, you could really hurt yourself or, or injure kids or, or the neighborhood as well. It's best to leave it up to professional. Now, occasionally um, people run into big ants, the, the mean ants out there, mm -hmm. the red ants, the fire ants. Mm -hmm. um, is that something that you also address if need be? No. No, you We're very that. specific with the uh, chapter three of the health code. Okay. Something poses a significant health risk, um, an endanger, the transmits a disease, something like that. So just because there's bugs in the house doesn't mean call you. Correct. Right, right. Correct. What are some of the other things that um, Arizonans need to watch out for? that you take care of? Well, that we take care mm -hmm. of? Um, well, look out for flies. Those are a mechanical transfer. They step in goo or something, then they go step in on your lunch. So they transmit, they can transmit salam salmonella, E. coli from one place to another. The roof rats, of course, the feral bees, and the, um, um, and the mosquitoes. Okay. Uh, that's for our department. Environmental services, mm -hmm. um, for permitted establishments, those are a little, those are a little different. Okay. So um, how many people do you have in your staff that go out and, and do this? Because you know, I, I know you're uh, during the mosquito season, mm -hmm. you're very busy with mosquitoes, but you're also dealing with uh, these types of critters on a year-round basis. We have 25 inspectors that go out on a daily basis to uh, answer complaints, deal with the, uh, the environment, and to deal with the customers. So how, how, does your, how is your department broken up? Explain a little bit about your uh, department. Everyone gets a, uh, gets a little district, and then they're totally in charge of that district. Okay. And um, we base it based on complaints and activity level. So like Peoria might have two or three different inspectors working bits and pieces. Phoenix might have three or four inspectors that have kind of bits and pieces of it. So depending on where that complaint is, I don't know who gets it. So um, if, if an HOA is interested in learning more about this and they don't necessarily, they want to speak to a person, mm -hmm. would that inspector be able to come out to an HOA meeting and talk to a group of people or is it better that people just, um, because the inspectors are so busy, better to go online and, and find all they can? You can start with an inspector in your area. Okay. Um, Normally what will happen is the supervisor would probably just go out and, and deal with that okay. just to kind of free up the inspector to, sure. to, uh, to do other things. 
So it's usually a supervisor would come out and do that. H how would they get a hold of someone to come out and speak to them? They can call our, uh, um, our office or they can get online and, and, and do a contact that way through an email. And so this information that's right here on the screen, um, is, it's worth calling, it's worth checking. Uh, to be aware of the type of critters and activity around your house at all times, it's important before it gets out of control. Because uh, when it is out of control, that's when you have to call the Maricopa County Environmental Services. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it takes a lot of work. And, mm -hmm. and, and how long does it take for someone to come out and, and kind of either eradicate or assess or, or figure out what's going on? From the time a complaint is filed, we, we like to give at least five days. Sometimes it's two or three days, but within five days, sure. an inspector will come out there. It just goes to show, you know, we're a huge county. I think we're the size of Connecticut when it's all well, said. Fourth largest county in the country, I believe. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's a big area, and, and 25 people, and really maybe 20 of them are actually on the street at all times. Mm -hmm. And so that's, it's, it's hard to keep up with everything, and, but they do just a fantastic job. Thank but you. it just reinforces that how important it is to make sure you take care of your own property and you keep an eye out on your neighbors and work together with your neighbors to provide a safe environment for yourselves as well as the children in the area. Mm -hmm. So David, thank you very much uh, thank for you, being here. Thank you for having me, I appreciate yeah. it. And again, how do people get a hold of you and what, um, what's the best way to contact you? You can start with env.maricopa.gov Go to our website, there's contact information there. Okay, great. Okay. Well, thank you very much for uh, joining us today. And if you have any other questions uh, about uh, pest control um, in your neighborhood that environmental services can handle, which includes uh, bees, roof rats, mosquitoes, those types of things, contact Maricopa County Environmental Services and they do a great job and uh, they'll be able to help you with this process. Mm -hmm.